Hey guys, Francis here. In this e-lecture series, we are going to talk about the inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry, or in short, ICP-AES. Before diving into the topic, have you ever wondered, is it safe to drink tap water straight from the tap? How do we know if the tap water is safe for drinking? Well, according to the World Health Organization guidelines for drinking water quality, if the amount of metals is higher than the maximum contamination level, it may have direct adverse health impact. Then the question becomes, how do we tell how much mineral or metals are present in our tap water? In other words, we are dealing with quantitative elemental analysis. And if we look at the maximum contamination level of these five selected metals here, they are all in the PPB region. Therefore, what we are interested here is to measure trace amount of heavy metals in water sample. In short, we are interested in trace elemental analysis, or TEA for short. So how do we perform trace elemental analysis? What are some of the common industrial practices when it comes to trace elemental analysis? In general, three major spectrometric methods are used for trace elemental analysis. AAS, Atomic Adsorption Spectrometry, ICP-AES, Inductively Coupled Plasma Atomic Emission Spectrometry, and ICP-MS, Inductively Coupled Plasma Mass Spectrometry. So which one is better? Well, it depends on the purpose and the budget. When it comes to the cost, AAS is usually the most affordable, while ICP-MS is the most expensive. Typically, AAS allows analysis of one element at a time, while ICP-AES and ICP-MS allow analysis of multiple elements simultaneously. If you are dealing with simple samples, AAS can be used. If you are dealing with more complex real-world samples, ICP-AES or ICP-MS may be a better choice. Thirdly, in terms of detection limit, both AAS and ICP-AES have low detection limits in the PPB region, while ICP-MS has a detection limit in the PPT part per trillion region, which is the lowest among the three. So far, it seems that ICP-AES and ICP-MS are better choices for our purpose here. So which one shall we choose? Well, there is another practical consideration here, which is the amount of total dissolved solid, TDS. In general, ICP-AES has a higher tolerance for TDS, up to 30% depending on the instrument and the accessory use. On the other hand, ICP-MS has a lower tolerance for TDS, which is lower than 0.2%. Therefore, sample dilution is often necessary for ICP-MS analysis. In this e-lecture series, we are going to focus on ICP-AES. Because of its low detection limit, high metric tolerance, and it allows simultaneous analysis of multiple elements, ICP-AES is widely used in the food industry for food safety and nutrition labeling, in environmental studies for pollution monitoring of soil sample, wastewater, and safety of the water supply. It is also widely used in the petrochemical, pharmaceuticals, and electronic industries. That's why we work with your seniors to co-design this ICP-AES experiment for you. So in this experiment, you will learn how to perform elemental analysis of trace metals in water samples using ICP-AES in a real-world context. All the way from sample collection, sample preparation, ICP-AES analysis, to data analysis. This experiment is a little bit different from the traditional teaching lab experiment. In this experiment, we bring real-world practice into the classroom, particularly the EPA protocols for ICP-AES analysis of water samples. In pedagogy, we call this authentic learning. 
We also incorporated autonomy and relevance, which are known to promote intrinsic motivation, into the design of this experiment. So you get to choose your own water sample that you would like to analyze, either from your house or from the campus. Hope you will enjoy this experiment. In the next video, we are going to take a closer look at what is ICP-AES and how does it work. See ya!